Let us read this scripture. If you don't mind, open with me the book of Matthew chapter 25. And I'll be using New Living Translation, Matthew 25. Today, we are going to lesson number two in uh, um, our title is um, Well Done. Say well done. So this is well done part two. Well done part two. Last week we had well done part one. But before we continue, let's just read that scripture. It's on the screen. This is what the Bible says. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, 34 to 40. He said, then the king will say to those on his right, right hand side, I mean, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was a prison and you, I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous one will reply, Lord, where, when did we ever see you hungry and fed you or thirsty and gave you something to drink or stranger? And showed you hospitality or naked and gave you a clothing. When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer and say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Praise the name of Jesus. So this is a continuation of our sermon last week. Uh, since um, last month, we've been talking about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, that God, uh, Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit to the people, to the disciples. They received the measure of the Spirit. And then after that, he was leaving. He said, stay here until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit in us makes us the children of God. But the Holy Spirit upon us, he gives us a power to work and do the work of God. Now, what are these works of God? We saw that we are called here to work. Now, just, uh, I want to just say this. A while ago, um, I, was in a, in, 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 I was a teenager, and there was a guy. He was um, our elder in the church. And this guy, he was reading the scriptures, and uh, he was very, very convicted that um, um, hell is real. So he would come in the evening, and he would just preach about hell, about the internal punishment, etc. And then at the end, he would have us stand up, and he would tell us to pray. Now, this was his prayer. God, I don't want to come to heaven. I don't need to be in front. Just put me in the bathroom. I just be in the bathroom in the heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Put him in the bathroom. Put him in the bathroom. He was passionate, crying. Honestly, he said, I don't want anything. I just want to be in the bathroom. If, I, if you have a bathroom, put me there. And most of us, we have this mentality that when we are saved, you want to be saved every day. You want to go to hell. There's more than that. We are saved and God gave us ability to do the work of the kingdom. Pray the name of Jesus. So it's good for us to be, to be, to be righteous. It's good for us to, to make sure that we live the right of righteousness and purity. But you cannot spend all your time always waiting to go to heaven. Because there's no first class heaven and second class heaven. There's only one heaven. And you get there through believing in Jesus Christ. After that, you receive the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can do what? You can work. Tell your friend to work. Ask you, are you working? Ask them, are you working? <laughs> are, are you working or you're just collecting uh, unemployment benefits? Because most of us sometimes when we are saved, we, we, all what we do is collect in unemployment uh, 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 packages. But the truth of the matter is, we read last week that we are the workmanship of with Jesus and then we are called to do good work. The Bible says that Jesus was anointed, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power and he went out doing good and saving people and healing those who were oppressed by sicknesses and diseases and the powers of Satan. So he was not anointed to become more child of God. He was not anointed to go to the temple. He was anointed to do good work, tell your friend good work. So we saw like class from last Sunday that Jesus gave them a parable. And he said, this is what happened, that the, a, a master was traveling and he gave people, he gave one five 
pieces of silver, another one two pieces, and another one one. And he gave them to go invest. The Bible says one with five who invested. When he came back, he gave five, ten back. So he gave five plus five. The one with two, he invested the two, and then he gave back four. And the one with one, he was given one. He said, I feared and I hid it. So here is your talent. And uh, those who gave five, uh, received five and gave back five, God said this, uh, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in little, so you are going to qualify and receive more, in charge of more. The one who received two and gave four, he said, you have been faithful in little, and uh, I'm going to give you even more. The one who was given one and he hid it, the Bible says that he was called a wicked servant. Take him out. The truth of the matter is, here is, a, here is a challenge. Those who have five, they compare themselves with others and say, I'm good. But you should not compare yourself what you are doing with others because there is always more. Praise the name of Jesus. He just said five to ten is good, but there is always more. Two to four is good, but there is always more. Praise the name of Jesus. I may be preaching in the church of 200 people and I say, good. But God said, yeah, this is a little, there is more. If I'm preaching the church of 10,000 people, God, I, I, I may feel good and everybody will say, yeah, pastor is a mega church. No, but God says there is more. So when you are faithful, there's no limit of what God can do. When you give tithe and offering, there's no limit of what God can do. Always there is more. Tell your friend there is more. Hallelujah. Don't settle for less. Now, today, the same chapter, Jesus is talking about how he was... The, 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 the king will separate the righteous and unrighteous. And he say like, hey, welcome, because this kingdom was created for you before even you were born. You are blessed. And he says like, this is what you did to me. And they will be asking, what did we do? He said, hey, I was hungry, you fed me. I was in prison, you came to visit me. But the truth of the matter is, these are the good works that God wants us to do. When he talked that we are created to do good work, what are these good works? So, is coming to church a good work? Is giving an offering a good work? Surely it is. But are we going to be rewarded for that? There are some things that we need to understand as a church. And that's why we are coming back today to talk about this. And uh, let us turn our Bibles, or if you can turn your attention to, this, to the screen, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 3 to 15. We read this last week, but we're going to repeat it again today. Because sometimes you have to keep on repeating stuff for them to stick in your mind. I want you to get off this, this trap of like you are not good enough. You cannot do good. So all the time, all what you are doing, you are going to church so that you don't, you don't miss heaven. Let me tell you something. Whenever you give your life to Christ, it's settled. Hallelujah. When you, you don't need to be saved today. Somebody come and preach to you. You know, sometimes... We come to a place whereby every year somebody been delivered from generational curse. So either the medicine not working or you don't believe. Because the truth of the matter, when you are saved, if the devil can put you in that loop whereby all time you are not good enough, you cannot do anything, you, you just want to go to heaven, you will be like my friend who wanted to go to the bathroom. But uh, you should not be going to a bathroom. There's something, there are rewards, there are some things that God wanted to do in Jesus' name. Amen? So the Bible says... For we are God's fellow worker. Let's read together because this is for us, okay? Say so you and I. Okay, so this is not for pastor. This is not for somebody else. You, the way you are, God knows that you, maybe you used to smoke. God knows that you, what you did. He knows that you did an abortion. He knows how you lied to the embers. All of us lied if you came from Africa, okay? He said you have a lot of money. He knows that you lied those years. You took like somebody back statement. He knows all these kind of things, Amen? Amen? Am I speaking to somebody? If you're an American, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you came from Africa, you know, you had to lie to the airport and, uh, and to the embassy. Are you coming back? Yes, I'll be back. I'm just going for three months. And you knew for sure that you are not going back. So you lied that time. If the devil can put you in that, instead of working, you feel guilty. Okay? Somebody is saying, no, she didn't do that. That's okay. But God knows, okay? You, you did that. Some of you came here for a mission. The mission ended up, you changed your mission. You kept yourself. But you see, it was the will of God for you to be here. It doesn't matter how you came. It was just a channel for you coming here. But now, when the Bible says that when he forgives our sins, 
He do not remember them anymore. It's like east from what you, you cannot connect east and west. And Jesus does not remember whatever you did. So don't allow people to keep on coming and pulling your sins so that they can collect offering. There's no need for that. When you are forgiven, you are forgiven. Tell your friend, I'm forgiven. They say some, I'm for forgiven because you are forsaken. I am uh -huh. You are condemned. I'm alive and well because the Spirit lives in me because you died and rose again. Hallelujah. That's what we need to tell the devil. But honestly, whatever you did and you keep on in that loop, the devil is very happy because you cannot do what God wanted to do. But if I can just tell the devil, he was condemned that I may be, I may be alive. I mean, I, I may be righteous. That's what God wants you to say. So let's read together. So let's read together, okay? One, two, three. For we are God's fellow worker. Stop there. <laughs> can you imagine like you're working with God? Who is your co-worker? Hallelujah. Some of you, you work with people. Have you been to a place, and I'm talking like you, 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 many jobs here, we have to work as a team. And then this teammate shows up, always late, on the phone all the time, giving testimony and praying. Okay? You are here with them, they're in Africa praying, casting demons, and they're supposed to work, and they clocked in. You have all these people. Which are, how do you feel? You feel like, oh, crap. This person showed up, oh, crap. I'm, I'm, I feel like calling in. But you know, like sometimes you have a coworker. Man, today is good. We are going to work. I have this team, this team, this team. You know, we are washing, doing car wash. I have this person. Oh, we're going to wash twenty cars. But that people are washing cars in the phone. Hmm? <laughs> you just be nice because this is a church. You cannot kick them away. But they need to be slapped and kicked out quickly, because you cannot be washing car with your phone, chatting. Am I right? So that's the truth. Like you are God's coworker. Now, God does not come to work, but he sends angels. So every morning when you wake up at 6 o'clock, there are angels surrounding you. I don't know how they feel about you. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap. Here, here we go again. Because every morning they are saying, okay, go. You are going to work with Aiden today. You are going to work with Zawad today. And they are excited. Oh, I'm going to work with Zawad today. We're going to accomplish a lot. We're going to touch the sick and do this. And they are, oh, man, bored. Just like... As, as usual. How many did you touch? The same way. You know. So you are God's core worker. Amen? Amen? Let's continue reading. You are God's field. God building. The next verse says, according to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. But each person must be careful how we build on it. Mm -hmm. For no one. Jesus Christ, 12. Now, if anyone build on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or straw, each one work will be, become evident. For the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire, and uh, the fire itself will test the quality of each one's work. If anyone's work which he has built on it remain, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work will burn up, he will suffer a loss, but he himself will be saved, yet only so as through fire. Praise God. So if you don't do anything for God, you still make it to heaven but you'll suffer loss. That's how assured we are with our salvation. If you're a believer, you gave your life to Christ, and you are following, you are living righteous life, you are doing what you are supposed to do, and you don't do anything. You just come to church and go home. And maybe you don't even come to church. You watch on television. That's okay. You make it there, but you don't have anything to give or to show because faith in Christ will give you eternal salvation, will give you eternal life. However, God will not leave, uh, be rewarding our faith. Like, how, how much are you saved? Hallelujah. It's like a delivery truck. Maybe you, ride, you drive a UPS truck or you drive FedEx or Amazon. Going to a gas station 
is necessary. Hallelujah. Because you cannot drive that thing without gas. However, stay in the gas station forever, you will not be paid for that. You get paid for the amount of package that you deliver. So you have a choice to be at the gas station and clean your vehicle and make it nice, look nice. And fine, they, they will not call you a thief, but you are stealing from yourself. Because at the end of the day, how many packages do you deliver? One. So one times $1,000 is how much? It's one. <laughs> Can you pay your apartment with that? No. So the more you do, the more you receive. Praise the name of Jesus. So it's very important for us to understand that Jesus is the cornerstone. And Apostle Paul, he is the leader. It's like Pastor Joshua in the church. I laid down the foundation. I can decide to lay a foundation where I'm like the battery in the church. If I'm, not go if I'm gone, there's no music, nothing. People lay foundation like that. So when they're gone, there's no church. Have you ever seen some churches like that? Yeah, there are some places where uh, if, if, if Aiden is here, we have drums. If Aiden is gone, there's no drums. Because that's the foundation that they build. But we lay a foundation where each one of us here, you have an opportunity to build. Hallelujah. If you can't build in the kitchen, you can build in cleaning. If you cannot build in cleaning, you can build in worship team. If you cannot do that, you can visit the sick. Everything is provided. However, you have a choice to make. Tell your friend you have a choice. Material that you use. He said, if you choose to use gold, okay. If you choose to collect hay, because hay is not expensive, just go cut some and, and build, fine. But there's a day of an appointment where everybody will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So we are building together, but you will stand by yourself. And then the Bible says, if your work will burn out, you will be saved by, through fire. However, you will not receive an eternal reward. So we are working so that we can get to eternal reward. Praise the name of Jesus. And that's why we are here today to say, this. I don't want to go to the bathroom and stay in the bathroom. Yes, it's, not, it's beyond like just going to the bathroom and stay there. It is us going there and have a work that can stand the fire and be purified. Because when you put gold in fire, it becomes more purified. But if you put hay in fire, you receive ashes. I don't want to get a crown of ashes. I want a crown of precious stone in Jesus' name. And each one of us here, regardless whether you are married or you are not married, whether your husband come to church or your wife comes to church, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you will not stand like a family. Hey, Kiande family, come here. Okay, give us your work. No, we are here to help you. I'm here to help my son. I'm here to help my wife. And they are helping me so that when we stand before judgment of seat of Christ, we'll be rewarded. Because each one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, um, let me just say this. Um, in, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10, let's read together. Ephesians 2. Verse number 10. Turn your attention to the screen. Let's read together. For we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus Christ to do what? Stop there. To do what? To do good works. So people, yeah, it's true. We are created to worship God. But people like that because that's, there's no hard work on that. You just worship, you know. But you are created to be the partner of God in doing what? Good works. Pray the name of Jesus. Let's continue. And it says, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So you are created to do a good work, which God has created. So before you are created, the work has already been created. Do you see that? God does not hire you and trying to look for something for you to do. He made a plan. And I need to a, a bus. I need uh, uh, I have a cafeteria. I have this. And then I'm hiring people to do this work that I have created for them. So when he calls you, 
It's not like he's calling you and say, um, now we have too many people here. What do I do with these people? What do we do with these people? No, 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 no. He calls you, and the moment you find yourself, you have a position. So there's nothing like it. In this church, you have nothing to do. Because the truth of the matter is, before you were created, God has already prepared a work for who? Say for me. Ask your friend, do you work? <laughs> Ask your friend, do you, are, you a, are you building? <laughs> what material are you using? You see, most of the time, we like cheap things with God. Cheap, 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 cheap things. Cheap time, cheap, 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 cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. We have been running this service, I think, for the past four or five years. Every morning we are here, whether there are two people or three. Thank God we are more than 20 here, we're more than 30. It's amazing. But the truth of the matter is, whether there is one person or two, we have to be here. Because this is God's work. Do you think like if you are going to London and you get to the Des Moines airport, maybe you are boarding Delta, I said, today we are not going. We have only two people, passengers, so please, we are not going. Have you ever heard something like that? Because those people work. Regardless where people are coming, they are there to do what? Their paycheck is not like, today you carry the five only, so <laughs> we're going to cut it 90%. No. But you see, when we do mediocre stuff, this becomes an option. Like today, I woke up late, so I think I should go at nine. Ay, ay, ay. You're just attending. What we said before Jesus, you'll be in for a shock. Lord, I did this, another, another. you're in for a shock because somebody will show up in this service and they say, oh, I went there, only there are two, only two people, pastor and his wife and children, they leave. But if you were here, they'll say, okay, this is a church because I don't want to go to a family meeting and call it a church, no. Pray the name of Jesus. But most of the time, we like cheap things, cheap things. You know, it's God. I'll plan ahead for a birthday. I'll plan ahead for a wedding. I even take a pity. Oh, but when we are coming for youth convention, uh -uh. when is that youth convention? Today, I, I didn't even know. I didn't know. I didn't know. You know, I'm too old now. <laughs> You've been too old. <laughs> Maybe God will put you in the bathroom. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, buddy. I think that some people deserve to be in the bathroom. Honestly, that guy was, but I think that some people deserve to be in I, I shall not tell them a, a stinking bathroom. They stay there. Because honestly speaking, if you are given everything, can you imagine going to the Moines airport and you are there, maybe you have a wedding back home you, or you have a funeral, you have something, and this pilot is like, I don't think you're going to go today. Yeah. What? I don't, feel like I, don't, I don't feel like my wife, my wife in the house, we are having so much problem. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not doing this today. I, I'm, this, I'm depressed. What? Oh, my child, my child, he, I didn't sleep yesterday, my child, so I'm not going. If you own that aircraft, what do you do? Huh? You know, God is merciful. He don't fire us right away. But sometimes he can make you irrelevant and inconsequential. Hallelujah. If you grow a big head, that I'm the one, he's going to make you irrelevant and inconsequential. That you are there, you are not there, there's nothing changed. And life goes on. Because there's this idea, I went to visit somebody about two weeks, three weeks ago. Went to visit this family, they called us, come and pray for our new home. So we went there. And went there, they are hosting a person with a disability. When she saw us, she was so excited. Oh, pastor and your wife, you are here. I've been praying for you. She said, I've been praying for you. She was so excited. And then she went and she brought a book. She said, see what I'm reading today. Today was, she has a devotional book. So she has these markers. And she said, I'm reading this today. And I was like, God, forgive me. Because you said sometimes we, we, we think we have titles or we have this and we think like, if I don't do it, you, you'll be surprised. Because there's somebody there, you call them somebody with a disability, but they are praying for me and my wife. They are praying for the vision. They are there, they are reading their Bible, they are doing stuff. 
And for here, for us, sometimes we think like we own everything. I'm telling you, sometimes God may not punish you, but he can make you irrelevant and inconsequential. I remember I was talking to somebody a few years ago, and she said, I'm leaving the church, and tomorrow I'm not, they were giving good tithe. The next day, they cut the tithe. But you know what? God made them irrelevant and inconsequential. Because when you think you are, you are giving like you to a position, and, and God decided to make it, he just like, and send money from somewhere else. So they just wonder, like, this guy is just doing the, what you are supposed to do, and they get mad. Because it's dangerous when God makes you irrelevant and inconsequential. If you read the book of Samuel, God rejected Saul. So, when he saw like Samuel was late, he took authority and started sacrificing. And when he came, what did you do? You did a stupid thing. I, was, I saw that you were late and I decided to do this. He said, God has rejected you and he given you the kingdom to somebody else. Now, from that time, he was the king, but he was irrelevant and inconsequential. He said for many years, he's the king, he has people, he's prophesying, but he was irrelevant and inconsequential. I want us to be relevant and to be effective in the kingdom of God when we honor what God has called us to do, when we serve what God has called us to do, when we decide to do what God has called us to do, I believe that God will honor and say, I love that my son, that my daughter. And when we do something, God will honor us and bless what we are doing in Jesus' name. Amen? So the Bible says that we are God's handwork, man. God had prepared stuff for us. God has prepared works for us. So number one thing that many people don't do God prepared something. You are not an accident. Tell your friend you are not an accident. Before you came, there was a provision. I always get surprised. You see, when a mother conceives, there's no milk. By the day that son or daughter shows up, everything opens up. So he comes with all the provision. And somebody says, I don't want to want to do. I was so scared when my kids were growing up. I was living in this place. I was paid $600.50. A month, and I was given a free house. But that free house, the, the, the heating was $400 during winter. And then I had to pay for my internet. I had to pay for my car insurance and everything. So I don't even know how I survived. So whenever I see somebody coming like, they bring their daughters doing hair. And I was like, when my daughter grow up, will they maybe even be able to do this? I don't know. I'm scared. And, and I'm scared. I see like kids are coming with Nike shoes and everything. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. We cannot even afford a gallon of milk for years. But guess what? When God brings somebody who brings this provision, up to this moment, I have never been scared. My kids like your car, I buy them a car. They want whatever because the provision of God comes. So I want you to know that whenever God sends you somewhere, he has already prepared something for you. If you grab it on your own, you will not make it. But if you, God gives you, then he has a provision because he already prepared. Amen. So number one, when you are going to do the work of God, we must be point number one. That's point number one. We must do what? Discover. He prepared something for you. And you show up. So he's not like up there saying, I don't know what to do with this kid. No, you are the one to figure out what did God want me, what does God want me to do? When God changed your address, most of you here from Africa, God changed your address from Nigeria to America. He forwarded your address. He forwarded the angels to come here. Now, the angels of God does not go to Nigeria or Kenya or wherever you come from there. They come here because your address was forwarded. The problem is when we come here, our work, job is still where we come from. So instead of looking for what God wants you to do here, your fixation is where you came from. So God wants to provide for you here. Your mindset is back there. So you are here. You are irrelevant to the devil and inconsequential to the devil. In fact, you have two clock. One comes here and when they're eating supper there, oh, you know, I want organic food. I want organic food. I wish I can eat that food. You see, because your mindset is up there. God forwarded you here, but instead of looking what is here, you are looking what is up there. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm speaking. I know this one is full of young people. The second service, you are Taniona. Second service, I'll talk about this. And they'll know. They'll see what I'm talking about. 
Because the truth of the matter is, you cannot be in Iraq fighting, and then your provision coming to Iraq and you escape, your mindset is somewhere in Mogadishu. It cannot happen like that. Whenever God sends you somewhere, he'll provide for you. If you're a pastor watching, if all the time you are going to people every time I don't have rent, you, need, you call yourself to the ministry. If God called you, he has a provision. Pray the name of Jesus. If God calls you, he has a provision. He can provide for you. If you see yourself struggling too much to hold the, the ministry together, you know, uh, even scamming people with selling oils and all these kind of things, you call it yourself. Or maybe you have gone outside the plan of God. Because when God comes, he gives you a plan. He will sustain you. He will do everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Aren't you happy that we are coming to this conference? We can sponsor kids. That we, we, we say, you, you come, we want you to pay $25. But if you don't have $25, it's not a big deal. God has blessed us. Hallelujah. Because when you are in the plan of God, you, are, you have to discover. So tell your friend you got to discover. Yes. Number two. Number two. You have to do what? Prepare. To prepare. <laughs> Say prepare. <laughs> Many people, they believe that the Holy Spirit will do everything will just happen. The Bible says that God prepared this work before you came. So before you were born in that country where you came from, God has prepared America. He prepared the apartment where you live. He prepared where you live, where you do everything. He put everything together. Or oh, what you need to do is discover and walk in the plan of God. But guess what? We spiritual field people, everything pray. Everything pray, 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 pray. You just pray the Holy Spirit will do. No, no, no. If you do not prepare, you do not prepare. Hallelujah. We don't need to go to the Bible. You just come here. These young people, they're doing an amazing job with our sisters here. They do it in worship. It doesn't just happen. They spend time. They fast. Rachel was telling me that they fast worship team and people. They fast and pray. And this Wednesday, I'm going to fast with, with a team of, 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 of momentum. We're going to fast and come pray. Because we have to prepare. Tell your friend, prepare. So if you want to walk in your destiny, you must prepare. Call yourself, get yourself out of phone, and, and sit down and say, I'm prepared. What am I doing for God this much? Because we just agree that God will reward people who work. And you say, do you work? So if I ask you, what do you do for the kingdom of God? Oh, I think I went to church. Is going to church a work of God? Probably yes, probably not. Amen? So I, I want just to encourage you, first of all, you have to discover what God called you to do. When you discover what God called you to do, then number two, you prepare. And then number three, do it. Amen? <laughs> do it. <laughs> we read from that chapter 25 that when this master gave them those talents, what did he do? He left. Say left. He was never with them like anybody. You see, if you are working for a boss, every moment he's back there. Did you do this? Did you chat? Did you do this? Then they don't trust you. And maybe he's right. If you don't do your job, they should not trust you anyway. But the truth of the matter is, when somebody trusts you, he will give you something and do what? Leave. I didn't come here to check how they're doing with worship uh, because I know they know what to do. Amen? That's a done deal. I hope, I know... Our, 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 our leaders in the kitchen, they are not here, but I believe we'll eat after this. I didn't go to pick and see, but I know that they know what to do. So when God gives you something to do, you discover, you pray, you discover it. Number two, you pray and prepare, okay? Always pray. Pray for preparation. Pray to discover. Number three, you pray to do it. Now, most of the time, those who are watching me, Many people are just still praying. God is saying, do this. I'm just praying. I'm praying. Okay, God gave you five talents to invest. I'm still praying. I, don't, I, don't, I wanted to make sure, like, if I invest, it's going to come. So for five years, what you are doing, you are hiding that and cover it with prayer. I'm praying. I'm still praying. If I should join the worship team, I'm still praying about it. No, simple and clear. You are lazy. You don't want to commit. So you cover that with what? Prayer. You pray and do something. Is that risk? Yes. They invested. They could have lost. But God does not work with coward. 
Every time, oh, I'm going to pray. I don't know if that demon will come out. You are a coward. I, I, wanna do that. I don't know if I, you do that, then you are a coward. You see, if the demon does not come out, is that my problem or God's problem? I'm asking, I'm asking you, okay? I came here and say, hey, I'm going to pray for you this morning, and God will bless you. And I pray for you, and maybe nothing happens. Is that my problem or your, God's problem? It's God's problem. It's not my problem. Okay? So, so the thing is, most of the time, we want like, I have to make sure. If I make sure God has called me in this area, then I'll step out and do. But God wants you just to step out. And when you step out by faith, he'll do it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So we prepare. We discover, we prepare, and then we do what? We do what we're supposed to do through prayers. Now, going back for next few minutes, going back to our scripture there in Matthew chapter 25. Don't go back there. I just want to go do this. Here are good works. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus was saying like this, he, he would tell the people, the righteous to be on the right. And he said, number one, you are... Righteous, because I was hungry, and you, you did what? You prayed for me. Okay? I was hungry, and you fasted for me. You see, people like to spiritualize everything. If somebody doesn't have a ride, don't pray for them. Get them an Uber, or go get them. Stop nonsense. We are praying for you. We're praying for what? I need food. Give me food to eat. Now, you can pray that God will give me my own, but if I'm hungry, you need to do what? To act on it. But guess what? God said, like, uh, when you saw these people who are hungry, he said, you prayed for them. No, he don't say that. You, do, you gave me something too? What else did he say? I was thirsty, Okay. <laughs> You pray, Holy Spirit, over me. <laughs> That's the truth. What did it happen? I was thirsty. You gave me a drink. So a drink may be costly. Hallelujah. Not only water. You go get some drink and give that person. And as he said, I was a stranger. And you do what? You invited me where? To church. To your home. Many people, when they see a stranger, they want to invite them to church. Now, let me ask you a question. This work, can it be done inside the church? Do we have a prisoner in the church? Do we have a hospital in the church? Do we have a motel in the church? So what do we do? We like to take everything, our responsibility, and rapture it in prayer and put it in a church. My friend, your work will burn out. The Bible says that uh, I was a stranger and you invited me to your own, <laughs> your own space for somebody that you don't know. Now, I have seen many people do stuff for people that they know. If there's a baby shower for somebody famous in the church, they will have uh, diapers from zero to until, what is the, the last diaper? It's number what? I, I forgot. Twelve? Do you, have, do you have a diaper number what? Okay, what is the biggest diaper for like a baby? Six, okay? So if somebody is famous, they have a baby shower, they will have diapers from zero to six. Too much. But if you don't know her, no, no, we don't know her. You don't want to go, you know, I got it. I'll cash up you. And maybe you don't even cash up. You know, because the, the truth of the matter is, we like to help the mighty. But God said that I was a stranger and you brought me in. I was sick. So do we have sick in the church who need to be cared for? No, we pray for people here. So the sick are out there, okay? And number, uh, last week he said, I was in prison. So we don't have any prison cell here in the church. A prison is in uh, Paul County and Knoxville, I think in Knoxville, somewhere there, we have so those. So those are the good work that God is talking about, that you are created. Tell your friend you are created to feed the hungry. You are created to visit 
the prisons. You are created to do what else? To give water to the thirsty. So when you see somebody, he may be a project that God is bringing to you. So you have to discover, is this person thirst? Is he hungry? Does he have a place to live? And next time I'll talk to you because one of the things that happened, Christian, especially people from across the Atlantic, they are very, very shy. They don't ask nobody questions. They don't want to be offended. They, don't want to offend. they just want to come to church and sit there and go home. Sit there and go home. The problem is, if somebody is hungry, you will not know that they're hungry. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, this, the Bible says that. And they ask him, when did we ever see you sick or in prison and visited you? And I know this is the most question that we have most of us. We don't know, Pastor, we don't know. You, you know all the people. We don't know people. So somebody is sick. Oh, we don't know them. We don't know them. You know, Pastor, you have the grace. You know how to talk to people. We don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to talk to people. But I make it intentional. Hallelujah. I talked to one lady one day many years ago, my 10 or 15 years ago. Probably 12. She came to church. Then I wanted to place her in a group. A group like we had those small groups, we have students. So I said, What age group were you? She took at me and said, Nobody have ever asked me my age. And then she walked out and never came back to church. I just met her like I think a few weeks ago. She has kids now. She said, how, how are you? I'm good. You know, I don't know, no, no, how are you? Because I just asked, like, which age group are you? She was mad and stormed out. Did I stop asking more people? I'll continue because I'm at work. Like I'm a realtor, man. If I fail to sell one house, I have to sell ten. Pray the name of Jesus. So most of the time you have to find out what people are and what they need so that you can invest. Because again, these good works, they are not inside the church. Second service, I'll be talking about ambulance. Painting an ambulance is not the work of the ambulance. It's very important. Fueling an ambulance is okay, but it's not the work of the ambulance. If somebody gives you an ambulance and they come back, it's clean and neat and everything shining good and smelling good, that's not work. It's necessary, but it's not a work. What you say, like, okay, we rescued somebody. Even if I come and I find the ambulance is bumped because you went somewhere to rescue somebody, you'll be, you'll be celebrated. And most of us, we take like... Uh, Okay, I'll talk that second service, but let's go to our last scripture here. Last scripture here. Last scripture. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, 19 to 20. If you can stand up on our, your feet here, let's just conclude. And the worship team, if you can come back here, we can finish on time. Okay, let's read together, and then the worship team come. Okay, one, two, three. Do not sell for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. And where thieves break in and steal. Instead do what? But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroyed. And where thieves do not break in or steal. Pray the name of Jesus. Now, he's not saying do not store your heart in heaven. Many of us, our hearts are with God, which is okay. But he's talking about our valuable, our treasure. You see, everything that you value, your heart is there. Pray the name of Jesus. How many of you can survive without your phone for like a day today? Anyone? Eh, praise God. May God, may God have mercy on us. If you forget your jacket in the house, it's okay. If you forget your phone, you have to make a U-turn. Because honestly, you can't survive without a phone. Everything is there. Your numbers are there. You are, you are boarding pass. Everything is very hard. So you treasure that phone. Amen? You, you, you care for it. Whatever it is, that's where your heart is. And some of us, we don't want people to get into our messages and see what, what we have been chatting and talking. Okay? So you need that phone and make sure that your phone is secure. So where your treasure is, there is your heart. Now God tells us this. He's not saying that we should not invest here on earth. But everything here on earth is temporal. Tell your friend temporal. You may have many, many, many buildings or many cars. You may own aircraft, etc. But when you go, those ones cannot be transferred. Hallelujah. 
We have a family coming back today from Nigeria. I know they may have Naira, but the moment they get to the entry of America, the Naira becomes invalid. Amen. Am I right? So in that kingdom there, your dollar will not count. In that kingdom there, your gold will not count. What will count is how you took this dollar and invested in good work. So when he comes there, he will reward you because not of a dollar, but because of the good work. Praise the name of Jesus. It's very important for us to understand that we need to invest in doing good work. Salvation is necessary, but also we have to cap that with a good work because at the end of the day, God will not reward us according to how much we have in our account. He will not reward us according to how much you have invested in this world, but a wise person will invest in the kingdom of God where most and rust cannot destroy in Jesus' name. Do a good work of God and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Good work involves going to see the sick. Good work involves inviting people to church. Strangers, not famous. The Bible says that if you do things to the great people, you don't get a reward because you are doing it for them to reward you, to give you back. But you look for somebody who cannot give you back and you pour onto them. You bless them. When you bless them, God is seeing that and you are putting your treasure in the kingdom to come whereby moth and rust cannot destroy and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we are God's workmanship created to do good work in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you excited? The second service I'll be talking about what we should be doing at the church. It's good to have these lectures and, and sermons but it's good for us to look. What can we do as Imani together? Do we have strangers in this city? Can we build an apartment complex to host them? Do we have people who are hungry? Can we do something about it? You see, if we think and we pray, God can provide. But if we keep on coming to church, we'll be fighting. Who is singing more time than the other one? In the kitchen, who put more salt than the other one? Some childish things if we don't do what God has called us to do in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you because we are the workmanship created by you. And Father, before even the foundation of what you, there's something that you ordain for us to do. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you help us, oh God, to start also doing the good work, preparing to do the good work, being available to do the good work so that God, we can be rewarded. I pray, Father, oh God, even for everybody who is here, that you help us, oh God, to store our, our treasure in heaven. But before we do that, we pray that our heart will be with you, O oh God. Because it's dangerous to have our treasures where our heart is not. But also it's necessary for us to have our treasures where our heart is. So I pray for any heart today which is bleeding, which is hurting. Father, I thank you because you're a good father. We pray peace for those who have no peace. We pray healing for those who are not healed. And we pray, Father, for vision and determination to do good work for those who have not been doing good work. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name.